Hi everyone, welcome to Big Oggy Golf. Uh, this is the uh, Q&A Ask Questions to Matt and Oggy video. Uh, it may be two videos depending on how much we waffle. Yeah, indeed. Um, so you'll know that in about 20 minutes when I split it into two. Um, this was going to be the video we were going to do just before Christmas, but I was unwell and then Matt was away, so we're doing it now. So if the other video we just filmed out on the course is edited, we don't need to say Happy New Year, but if this goes on first, yeah. Happy New Year to you. Indeed. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for all the questions. Um, we've pretty much got all of them here. I think I may have lost one or two because it's been such a long time, but I've done my best to put them all down on paper. So if you want, I'll read them out and you can um, answer them or vice versa, depending on yeah, I'll, I'll, where I'll, we I'll go. I'll read them out. And then I can pick and choose. Well, you can pick and choose. That's fine. Um, now the, the obvious thing here is, John, some of these I think we have mentioned we address, since I mean, yeah. they've come in. So read the first one. Yeah, so we've addressed that one. Yeah, this was from Charles. Um, I cast the club when playing my irons, especially with wedges, which caused me to shank them. Yeah. Do we have a drill I could do to stop casting? And, and we have, and if you've yeah. watched the video, which I've already put out just before Christmas, that was the pro tip all about that. Yeah. So if you want to see that video, we will link it above. Yeah. It's there. And uh, you can go back and have a look at that one. But have a look after we've done the Q&A. Yeah. Okay. So the next one, it comes from Joe Young on Twitter. Hang on, I think Charles had a second one on there as well. Oh, okay. Well, Charles. So you try reading see, the, read the whole see. thing, man. Yeah. Don't get breeze through it. Charles, Char Charles is getting greedy asking two <laughs> questions. He gets about questions and a video. Exactly. Blimey, we ought to get him down soon. Yeah. He's taken over the channel, <laughs> Charles. Also, Oggy, okay, just wondering if you've had a golf ball fit in and what your swing speeds are. Um, we don't know yet. No. We haven't done the swing speed yet because the, 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 the swing has changed an awful lot since yes, I ever got fitted for my irons. Yeah. You could probably, and this is a nice thing just going through here, although the only pen I could find was a Sharpie pen. Um, when you got fitted originally, yeah. you might still be able to get that detail of how fast. Yeah, I'll contact the Zuno and I'm sure I can get the details yeah. yeah. So, and then we can certainly, even if we were just using our Sky Track or Sky Pro, we can get a club head speed. But the answer to that question, Charles, is no, you haven't had a golf ball fitting. No, not as yet. But I think it's one of those things I wanted to get a consistent swing. Yeah. And then be confident about what how I was playing. Definitely. Before we did that. And ironically, it, yeah. just before you turned up, so didn't you up, um, Ben, the new rep from Strixon, was down in okay. the shop, and I joked to you as I walked out to do a lesson. I said, oh, it's always ironic someone turns up that you want to speak to, um, because I do believe they've got a new Z Star ball coming yeah. out soon. So, uh, if Ben wants to send us some down, we can try those. Yeah, and, um, and to be honest, I think that was one of the things I want to do this year. When we actually get to the point where we're kind of playing the season, so from sort of March, April time yeah. onwards. It would be nice to play the same ball throughout the season, irrespective Definitely. of whatever ball I play, because I've got a bag full of different balls. Yeah. And um, again, this video probably is going out after the competition video, where I'm actually giving away a whole load of different balls, because I've got okay, like, two of this, two of this, three of this. Mm -hmm. So, and I tend to play everything. Yeah. And that, I think that needs to be consistent, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, and without <laughs> making a whole video now with Charles's question, um, the golf ball thing, without, and we're, we're totally unbiased in that yeah, sense, we'll play um, we, we will play anything but at the same time I think there's so many good golf balls out there they'll all probably come up with some statistic about most played, most wins, most this, most that um, and I will say to you Charles you've got to go and try a few different balls out and don't just believe the hype that because I know Xander Shuffler has won out last couple of weeks ago um, using the new Callaway driver um, and he probably had the Callaway golf balls. Everyone should go out and buy that golf ball, that driver. Um, it's very personal to you and without being disrespectful to anyone playing at an amateur level, unless you're hitting the ball consistently, the difference between one model, whether it be a Strixon like the AD 333s or the soft feel, your miss hit will be a bigger difference than that green sure. logo or the blue logo on those tricks and golf. I, I think it's all, certainly for me, it's a confidence issue. If I feel that 
um, I've regulated the ball so that it's yeah. always the same ball. Yeah. Then again, it comes back to another of those yeah. irregular factors that yeah. we have to deal with. And I think you hit the nail on the head there. It's just one less variable. Yeah, one less variable. That's yeah. one. One yeah, less variable. variable. And it is that power of 100, isn't it, again, that it's a lot easier to change 100 one percent rather than one hundred percent. I'm actually trying the, the new Titleist proto yes. prototype at the moment yeah. um, and I really like it. Yes. Um, apart from it just feels a little bit clicky when I'm putting. Okay. So I think it might be the prototype of the Pro V1X because right. they're a bit clickier than the Pro V1. Right, yeah. Um, but they go really well Yes. and the, my approach shots are holding fantastically because yeah. my approach shots are quite low as you yeah. know I don't hit a really high ball. No. And playing today and the, the normally fast greens, they are holding on the greens. Yeah. But that putting is still yeah. a thing. So again, it's, it's a confidence thing. In the end, you have to decide what you like. Yeah, you want, definitely. Do you want something that feels soft when you putt yeah. it? Do you want something that definitely. feels clicky? And it's a price thing as well, isn't it? Yeah, there is, there is that thing that is a price thing. Um, but so we can go on to another question yeah. and conclude that the answer is simple. No, you haven't had a golf No, we haven't had a golf fit, but we will get round to but doing we'll something. we'll do one in 2019. Um, and again, and we will do that fitting on any company, sure. uh, whether it be Titleist, whether it be the Trickler Volvic or golf balls, yeah. again, Volvic, uh, Mizuno, anything. Anything, yeah. But and I would suggest you do the same, Charles. Go and try a, a load of different golf balls and see if it makes a difference to you. Yeah, buy those yeah. little packs of two or three and just give a few yeah, exactly. a go. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And a lot of new launch golf balls uh, will definitely have trial golf balls out there okay. for you to do. Um, so moving on. Moving on from the Charles show. To, from Charles, uh, we've got Joe Young on Twitter, junior golfer at Enmore Park, yep. handicap twenty six point five. Ironic, Joe Young, and he's a junior golfer. Oh, junior Young, yeah, I very good. You were trying to be funny there. No, I wasn't trying to be funny, Matt. No. Okay. No, so, on. quick question for Matt: What should? Oh, I've rephrased that. We start. What shots should I work on to cut my handicap? Wow, where'd you well, start, Joe? Um, as I've said to John, and when you've been watching all these videos, we look at everything. Um, everyone is very different, though. So the best advice, Joe, is the majority of your shots will be hit from 50 yards into a green. Yeah. So it's I say to any of my sort of county juniors I might be teaching, or any enthusiastic older golfers as well that have got the time and effort that they're going to dedicate to practice like me at, at yeah. least like you yeah, yeah? yeah at least spend half your time practicing the short game sure you know and when i say 50 yards in 25 yards in and again a bit like we said about the golf ball manufacturers coming out with these claims uh, it depends who you listen to to how many shots are within 10 yards how many are within you know 25 yards but you only well you should only hit one tee shot on every hole 18 shots but you could quite easily have 36 putts yeah so again just if you're just looking at those simple things like here on a par 3 golf course well yeah and i'm practicing for let's keep it simple the math an hour a day i want to probably spend a third of my time practicing tee shots yeah i want to spend two thirds of my time practicing anything other than tee shots hopefully putts because i'd like to think i was on the green uh but i still then need to back that up with some short game stuff so to get your handicap down joe without having looked at your golf swing at all and again you might be you might have a perfect full swing and the short game might be rubbish or it might be the other way around so it's, it's a general point i'm making the short shots are where you're going to save and again a bit like the video we did today your tee shots weren't great but they were in play yeah other than one other than one yeah, yeah. If so they were usable yeah and if your short game was good you could have gone around in par today yeah i'd have recovered all that from exactly from that position but so my putting's wrong Yes. Well, the short game's wrong. You're then adding and adding and adding. So it sounds uh, silly. I would concentrate more on the short and then work out to the tee shot because there is a bigger, generally a bigger margin of error off a tee shot than a putt. Okay. Yeah, so I think yep. that answers that one. We got Tony Gordon on YouTube. I'd like to ask Matt if it's possible to have a coach only 
online or does it only work in person? Yeah, we did discuss that a little bit on one of the yeah. driver videos, but we come back to it now. Yeah, and if either is possible, should we pay equally for both? Um, and just to summarise up, Tony, if you had seen that video or not seen the video, um, yes, so, so my view is it works best in person. Practically, if if you can't see that person or one of you's moved out of the area, um, i.e., if John suddenly gets a job up, a job, a, a job What's up. What's a job, Matt? Yeah, job. Artist. Yeah, What's a exactly. job? I was thinking a job uh, up in Scotland, and he yeah. goes to Scotland. He, he would be a prime candidate to send me videos online because I know what your golf swing's like. Yeah, we haven't got to start from scratch now, with someone else. If someone up in Scotland one day thinks, oh, I'll have a lesson off that guy that. Uh, teaches big oggy I would be thinking well, hang on I need to see that person yeah, yeah? Um, so personally I'd say you need you need to build up that rapport with the person you need to be in face to face with that person um, and then there's scope to doing it online if that fails yeah. um, and again m my point was it doesn't matter if I'm sat in front of someone uh, or I'm or that the videos come through online, time is time. So yeah, to keep it simple, I, I would be expecting the same reward, um, whether they were in front of me or doing it online. Yeah, you could spend an hour in front of a computer screen working yeah. stuff out the same way as you spend an hour on the range yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't think one's necessarily uh, less value than the other in terms of monetary. But I will then question if if someone says to you, right, I'll give you an online lesson and it's only going to cost you ten pound. But if you come and see me in person, it's forty pound. It probably reflects the fact that they're only going to spend ten minutes looking at your video yeah. online. So you will then get what you pay for. I think is the answer to that. Yeah. And, and to be honest, for me, I would much rather be certainly for a start be face to face with. The the yeah, coach, yeah, um, because uh, I don't know if you have Tony, but most people like me at my age have got various you know, body issues or had operations and, and stuff from their knees. You need to know about those things, and you can't really type all that out. No, and then and not see me trying to hit a ball or see the limitations in my body without yeah, definitely on the camera. So. And a, a lot of the just a very quick one on that point, John. The stuff I've done online for people is normally voiced over. Well, that's technically what it's referred to as, but instead of yes, me tapping out, some of the things I say to you, you've got to have the right tone to say it. Sure. Because otherwise, if I you know tapped away, oh, that really was the worst shot you've ever played. You could take that quite personally. Yeah. Yet if I said it in a more sort of jokey way, and you know full well you were thinking that. Yeah. There's certain things you can say to someone face to face, and other things that people will just take quite personally. I think to me, it's important to build yeah. up a rapport between definitely. coach and yeah. player. You know, yeah. we, we are in the end friends, and yeah, we just yeah, go on with it and enjoy it. So. And hence, I said on that last one, you need some WD40. Yeah, 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 yeah. That rusty. Yeah. You know, and then other people, well, tap that away. People think, what the hell is he on? Or yeah. what's he on about? Although I'm sure you think that a lot of the time anyway. Um, so Tony, yeah, um, I'd personally get yourself down in front of someone, have a lesson, and then go from there. Then we got Terry Hollis on YouTube, and um, forgive me if I get anyone's surnames wrong. Yeah, well, I, I um, didn't be bothered to name Charles's surname that quite No, quite exactly. <laughs> I, I skipped that one quite wisely. Uh, Terry says, I'd like to see you play against Matt. So, so this is addressed to you. I'd like to see you play against Matt with your shots. I okay. think you're getting ready for an arm wrestle. Yeah, we could be that. Yeah. that yeah. Or are you getting a dunk? Well, if I had a glove, I'd go throw the gold there. Okay, throw it down. Okay. Uh, with your shots, like a big eye pro challenge, no tuition. Um, yeah, it's, it's possible we could do that, Terry. Um, I'd also like you to do a driver video, Big Oggy, or <laughs> it titles up, sorry, Big Oggy adds 30 yards to his drive. Yeah, I have to say that the driver lesson we had the, day, the other day, even though you didn't see the results, yeah. I think they might have actually done 30, <laughs> 30 yards on it. They were, that was an amazing video for me. No, no, it um, was. It will be interesting to see some figures at some point. So yes. maybe when we go back and do that gap test, 
and yeah. have a look at the old figures from the yeah. last one. There might yeah. be a different thing. Definitely, yeah. That. So ironically, Terry, in that last bit first, that's at 30 yards, um, you could get back down to West Cornwall where you had your driver fitting with a good friend of mine, Jason, and um, he's probably still got your Yeah, they're still data. on screen, yeah. Um, and you, you know what Jason's like, he'll probably end up sending you a new driver. Yeah, probably will, but yeah. New TS3 yeah, or something. Exactly. Like that. But you would go on that and impartial to what I've said, um, Jace will then fit you and say, blimey, look at your numbers. So ironically, I think, although we haven't done a Pacific video on that, you probably have found 30 yeah. yards. It'd be good for views though, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. Big yeah, guy against 30 yards on his driver. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. We've already done it. Yeah. yeah, but we need proof. Yeah, so okay. I think yeah, Terry, yeah. we'll work on proof on that. That has yeah. got. I'm sure. I'm sure I have gained a fair distance on my definitely, driver. Definitely, definitely, and you hit it straighter as well. Yeah, and to me, that was always the key. That's yeah. why we cut the driver down. That's why it was always, it was always more about accuracy and not so wide dispersion for me. Yeah, but we'll definitely have a um, a, a game at some point. The, yeah. the hard thing with um, naming me down for a game of golf is a time factor. Because you're actually a very popular man and very busy man. Yeah, it's, it's, I don't know about the popular, but it's only busy. Well, um, your, your ability as a coach yeah. is um, unsurpassed in this area as far as I'm concerned. Well, thank you. But I think it's a time factor. Um, and again, you put me off what I was going to say. But at some point we will do a challenge um, because I do like time off now and again. Yeah, we, so, I mean, we have said a while ago about maybe we'll go and do one of those pro-am things or something at some yeah, point yeah. As, a, as a pairing so yes. that might again definitely. you will see me and Matt at some point on on course videos yeah. little challenges and playing yeah, yeah, definitely definitely and other people as well Absolutely. as and you other mentioned people. Yeah, yeah. the golf course um, so we've got Darren Sturman yep. also a question for the professor so I don't know who he's uh, referring you. to as that but what do you make of one length iron set? Is it a good idea for the swing or does it damage your progress? Yeah, I think Darren has bought a set of one length irons or he's certainly tried them out and really liked them. I'm glad you said that before yeah. I said no, throw them away. Well, no, no, I think that's, uh, again, it's one of those things where um, you either yeah. like it or you don't, isn't it? I teach, um, let's just say a lot of people, um, without, I don't know, Last year, it would have been over 100 different people. One person turned up with a one length set of clubs. So you are in the minority, Darren, if you have gone out and bought that one one length set of clubs. Um, the one person I'm thinking of will remain nameless because he might not want us saying about it. Um, it certainly didn't damage his progress. He's got better. Yeah. yeah so. <laughs> my limited experience of the one length says the one person i do teach who's in that one percent um did get better um uh, without giving it the hard sell because i never give anyone a hard sell he was also having lessons at the time yeah and goes back to your trying to cut down on variables um he was just trying to do everything he could and and the logic and the physics of a one length set of clubs if i just make the same swing yeah. the angle and the club face changes i was going to ask that is, is the, the fact height. that you have a what the same length club mean that you do change the way you swing say the the wedges and the you know nine eight irons as opposed to the longer irons well long term i think and again like i said i don't use them but long term i see the logic and the physics saying there you learn one swing okay it's the loft that changes on the club. So, like anything, your sand line, you'll use at different speeds. Of course you would do, but it wouldn't matter if that was the same length or not. So you have one swing, your sand line or your most lofted goes the least distance. When that distance is too much, just like any other set of golf clubs, you then have to reduce the speed. But it just means, in theory, you're standing the same distance away from the ball each time. Um, so, yeah, I can see the pros and cons. I'm unconvinced whether, well, I'm not unconvinced, I just think if it was a really, really big thing, everyone would be doing it. Yeah. Um, Bryson the Shambo, I think, is the guy that does use a one length set of clubs out on tour. Now, again, you wouldn't want to bet against him. 
But then again, he might be able to do that with a normal exactly. deck. Exactly. And then you're thinking, is he just a talented guy? He's yeah. a bit of a whack case as well, isn't he? Um, so, jury's out on that one. Yeah, I can see the positive. Yeah, I'd like to give them a go. Yes, That'd be exactly. And, and I yeah. said to you out in the golf course today about the fact that you want to try and swing your clubs at the same tempo and intensity and confidence. Now, if having a one set of clubs gives you that same confidence and suddenly that five iron is the same length as your nine iron, yeah. and I like a nine iron, so I must be like this because all I'm changing is the loft. I, I can see the... the Placebo effect. Yeah, I can see the the, the effect on me yeah. because when I look at when I go to say a, a four iron or my three iron, they seem so far away yes. compared to the yeah. Seven, the eight or nine iron. what shots do you play better? Hands down the grip. Yeah, I'll just punch this one. Though what we've done is change that four iron into a seven iron yeah. to a large length. Length wise, yeah, yeah. So, jury's out, Darren, on yeah. that one. If you've got them, Darren, I'll give them a go. Yeah, I'm not going to let us know. I think, I think you'll are. meet Darren at some point. Well, it's one of the ones okay, he lives in perfect. Plymouth and we'll be playing quite often Cornwall Devon with him. Yeah, perfect. So, we'll get a chance to try them out if you've got them, Darren. Yeah. If not, uh, Cobra, um, send yeah. us a few, we'll have a look. Yeah, I don't know who the Cobra guy is. No, I'm just scanned ahead. <laughs> and we got your. Yeah, you've avoided bars. Yorkie bars, haven't you? Because that's question. a really technical question. Yeah, and that's going to be quite boring for the video because there's like an essay. It is, it's, yeah, I know. Um, Yorkie bar, I'm, I'm, you're surpassing yourself with this, mate. I'm telling you. And it's all about strong lofts. Um, and you've read this one, so you might have to improvise while I just read down. Uh, but it was about lofts, wasn't it? And low trajectory and low speed. Yeah, you're saying, you're saying he's having problems. Uh, he's been he's had various lessons with various people, Yorkie Bar, and I know he's been struggling a bit with confidence. Uh, but he's saying now that he's been told he doesn't have a fast enough swing speed, so there's not enough spin on the ball, and the ball is dropping out of the sky kind of thing. I think that's, mm -hmm. that's the issue. So maybe they should be having a higher lofted 7 iron as opposed to the one he's already got that gets the ball a bit further higher up in the air. I think, that, that's I, I think uh, I'm just going to park the question at this point because again some of these are quite easy to answer I'm going to have to just get my head around this because if if the balls are dropping out because they're not as lofted as they could be i.e. we need weaker lofts like at first glance that 7 iron if it's not going high enough Surely you hit an eight line to make yeah. it go the height that your seven line should have gone at. Um, so I'm sure there's, that, and again, this is one that Bryson DeChambeau would love because he loves all these angles. Yes, yeah. I may actually type this one out and put it on the screen so you can freeze it and you can read it all yourself. Yeah, it's very definitely. in depth on this one. Yeah, um, but yes. Although that's not going to help you one bit, Yorkie. But at this point in time, I, d I need to get my mind round whether a less, sorry, a more lofted club would help you because surely every club in the bag, numerically higher number, is less lofted than the previous one. Yeah, and I, I know so, what happened with my driver. We initially, that's why we had my driver turn into a, I had a 12 degree driver yeah. instead of my 10, yeah. which we then up to a 13. Yes. And it was adjusted with, with sightless different yes. adjustments to, to give me more height because my ball was dropping out of the sky because it wasn't getting yeah. enough spin. Yeah. Um, and yet when we did the driver lesson and I had all my swing adjusted, yeah. now we're actually saying actually this goes a bit high. Yes, exactly. So maybe it's more a case of the swing needs adjustment than it is changing the club. Because there's only a couple of degrees different, we're not... Yes. And, and, and certainly for me, with the driver, when I changed my swing, yeah. we've gone completely from a, a low trajectory, low spin, um, to a lot much higher trajectory, yeah. to the point where we might actually be changing the driver to a lower yeah. one. And so it's, it's yeah, very it, complex, isn't it? Yeah, there is a complex, and it's also a confidence issue there, i.e. the club head speed. What, it, what is the club head speed at the moment? Because I've got the numbers on the loft. Yeah, we don't have a But I don't speed know what, what sort of speed you are swinging that club at. I know your Bar is on about he'd like to come down and, and play me down here at some point, so if he does come down a corner, yeah. then maybe we'll come and give him a little 20-minute lesson yeah, and yeah, uh, definitely. Yeah, see definitely. what we think. Yeah. Um, and bring him around here and play, yeah, maybe. Yeah. So another, uh, I say another one, uh, different character, Nick C on YouTube. Yeah, played him today. 
Very good player. You played yeah. him today. That's one that of the players at West Cornwall. Oh, yeah. Okay, perfect. Okay. He actually mentioned it, so please make sure Matt discusses this, this <laughs> question. <laughs> there you okay. go. So, um, and I don't know if you were going to bring these questions up on screen, but I play a, a public course where we never know how much sand there is in a bunker. We'd be interested to know if the bunker shot should be played the same way no matter how much sand is in the bunker. Yeah, you said to me today that sometimes when, you know, when they go in the course there's already any sand in them but they don't yeah. really know and they can't put a club in the ground yeah. to know how deep no. it is. I, some, it, I sometimes then... Oh, again, you might have to cut and edit this. I sometimes then... It, that, might not cut it right down there. Okay, maybe not. Sometimes then... It, I don't know if it's... Okay, but... Okay, rewind. <laughs> is, it, is it you misreading what I've written? Or no, 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 I think it's okay. the way it's written. I don't know if it's my poor play or lack of sand in the bunker causing the club not to be able to get properly under the ball. Okay. Yeah. So the long and short, Nick, um, the bunker, well... Again, if you are the chap that played with John today down at West Cornwall, well, plays pretty well to be honest. Yeah, yeah much and than again without um, upping the green staff down at West Cornwall because I know them all very well, they have got a consistent amount of sand in the bunkers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and that is the difference straight away between, let's the, say, a, a private members club uh, where you're paying that much more money than going along and playing a more of a public golf course where you get what you pay for a game. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so in theory, I go down to West Cornwall Golf Club, I expect a fairly consistent amount of sand because that's what we associate with that golf club. We turn up at another golf club and as soon as you look at the sand, Nick, you, you should get a bit of a sense of how much sand is in the bunker. There is nothing stopping you on although today we went in the bunker, had a couple of practice swings, it wasn't not allowed practice swings in the bunker that marked the sand. But when you were addressing the ball and you're shuffling your feet around in the sand, I will say if you got used to shuffling and just tapping your toes down, you can get a sense of how much sand is in that bunker. Because to answer I think the very simplistic point of this, yes, you would definitely play a bunker shot differently if you knew there was loads of sand to no sand, yeah? Uh, because it's a bit like saying, right, I'm trying to hit the ball off this table. That is going to react very differently sure. to a carpet. Do you, do you think we could do a, a pro tip, a little video about that? At yeah, some point? I think we'll need, that That needs to be a practical one. Yeah, because we need to see that one. Uh, but the first thing I will see, say, Nick, when you go back to these more public golf courses, these municipal golf courses, um, just make a habit when you go in and, and you're addressing the ball, whether the club face is open or square, however you want to play that shot, make sure you just tap your toes down into the sand. I'm sure we've done that on one of our videos already. And, and you'll notice how much sand, and if you did the same routine every time, you'll then say, yeah, hang on, I can see that difference, because sometimes I tap my toes down, there's no sound moves. Sure. You do it down at West Cornwall, you tap your toes down, there's sounds over your front of your shoe. You also get the same things with different sand. Yes, in different places, don't you? Some yeah. is basically builder's sand, let's be yeah, honest, and it's harder to rock, and some yeah, is yeah, soft yeah, and yeah, fluffy yeah. like yeah. right and, and certainly, even at the edge of the bunkers, compared to the bottom of a bunker, the front of the bunker, there's going to be a big difference. That might be that a little bit as I say to my son, attention to detail, you know, it, it very much should be a different type of shot based on the sand. And there are, without having to touch the sand or test the sand, there are different things you can look for to see how much sand is there. And one of them also is how the ball sits in the sand. You know, if the ball's nestled down in the sand, there's a bit of sand. If the ball's always on top of the sand, like it would be on this table, the chances are that it is very compressed. And just as a very quick one, if it's compressed, I would almost try and play it more like a chippy shot out if, if there really is lack of sand because it would be the same as trying to play off this table yeah. as i said to you out on the golf course today try and keep the club head low both sides um rather than steep yeah if you're going steep you need to know you're going to go under it and if you're going steep you need to make sure you're hitting exactly where you're looking yeah okay, okay. so but we might do a uh, a video on that yeah okay so i think we'll leave it at that for end of part one We'll do part two, which will go out after this one the next day. Perfect. So we've been mopping off for quite a while. 
Well, well, always waffle. Yeah, we do it for England. Waffle. Yeah, we do it for the Olympics. Indeed. Okay, so thanks so much for watching. Part two will be tomorrow, uh, and we'll crack on with the next set of questions, Matt. Perfect. Okay.